Hi, I'm Dr. Robert Carlson. I'm a board certified thoracic surgeon and a board certified general surgeon. I have a tremendous interest in vitamin D because of some of the initial research that has come out on this. Um, it's very impressive and I believe we need to pay a lot more attention to vitamin D than we are at this point in time. You know, recently our better understanding of this vitamin D and its association with its physiology, receptors, have identified its benefits a lot in inflammation. Inflammation is critical in heart disease. Uh, I believe it's actually more important than cholesterol, the effects of cholesterol. Now, one of the other problems I have is the use of the, I should say, the excessive, inappropriate use of statin agents for slightly elevated cholesterols because they will block the production of vitamin D. Uh, the 7 hydroxy cholesterols formed in the skin, you need cholesterol to produce vitamin D. And if we're seeing a reduction in heart disease by 58%, with elevated vitamin D levels and people are taking medications that block this vitamin D production in the skin, then uh, this has to be something we have to pay more attention to. Uh, other studies in the past have shown O2-400 oh, was fine. Uh, now we've moved up to 800 and in fact They've done a study comparing 400 to 800 in patients with the development of heart disease, and there was a dramatic reduction in the development of heart disease. And again, inflammation is one of the factors. So what we do in inflammation, we look at things such as C-reactive protein, which is an inflammatory marker. We also look at cytokines, which are chemicals that mediate inflammation in the blood vessels. Vitamin D reduces these dramatically and so that is critical, very critical. Another part of this equation in cardiac disease is the, there are enzymes called proteinases that release the plaque that's built up on the inside lining of blood vessels. And this plaque disruption can change a stable situation into a urgent situation where there's no blood supply, a blood vessel is completely blocked, and you're having a heart attack. So plaque instability is associated with vitamin D deficiency. In the same regards, improving vitamin D levels will stabilize plaque better. So reduction in inflammation, stabilization of plaque, those are key. Now, one of the other things that we look at a lot is blood pressure. And blood pressure is mediated by chemicals called angiotensin. And, and in fact, lisinopril, which is a, a blood pressure medicine, uh, then there's the angiotensin renin blockers such as Diavan or Avapro. These help us with blood pressure. Vitamin D blocks this. Vitamin D has been shown to reduce blood pressure in hypertensive males. So again, vitamin D has tremendous advantages in that. One of the other aspects probably mediated some by this reduction in blood pressure is left ventricular hypertrophy and that's this thickened wall around the left ventricle. This is a human heart. This is the left ventricle and the wall gets very thickened. Higher incidence of arrhythmias and so vitamin D will reduce this left ventricular hypertrophy. So those again are very critical factors that are associated with reduction of heart disease. Next, I wanted to talk a little bit about some of the other issues, for instance, cancer. Um, again, we have shown that improvement in, and reduction in cancer, particularly there was a study out of Creighton University, a very nicely well-developed, well-designed, double-blinded, randomized, placebo-controlled trial on postmenopausal women showing a reduction of all cancers lung cancer, colon cancer, breast cancer, lymphomas, leukemias by 77% in a five-year period. Why haven't we heard more about this? Uh, I think it's a very relevant study 
and I think everybody should be on vitamin D just from that study. There are studies that showed dramatic reduction in diabetes, a child onset diabetes, when uh, levels of even 2,000 a day were given to children, starting at one year of age. Uh, this was a Finnish study. In addition, there's been multiple studies that have showed reduction of upper respiratory infections. Uh, one really interesting study gave almost 60,000 units of vitamin D to very young kids who had chronic upper respiratory infections. 60,000 units. At that time, three or four years ago, I suspect that was close to heresy, but the bottom line, it's not. It took these children that were chronically ill and dramatically reduced their upper res recurrent upper respiratory infections, earaches, completely for a six month period while they were on that study. So that's a dramatic improvement. It upgrades your immune system. And in, in fact, ladies who are pregnant, we're seeing that reduction in problems with children, newborn children, some of the malformations that occur during pregnancy are reduced with adequate vitamin D in ladies. The problem is it's too inexpensive. It's not cheap because anything that reduce heart disease by 58%, cancer by 77% is not cheap. It's very inexpensive. Nobody makes money on it. There's no halftime Super Bowl commercials with vitamin D. Nobody's making money on it, but it's dramatically reducing uh, issues. One of the other things from the age, we're talking about one year old, there was a wonderful study done, average age 87 in nursing homes. And they gave ladies this range to try to keep them up into the 40 to 50 nanograms per milliliter, which is this. Uh, uh, level blood level of vitamin D that we look at dramatic reduction in falls by 80 percent reducing falls in the women that were taking the vitamin D and we know that if a woman in their 80s falls in a nursing home the likelihood of a hip fracture is very high and we also know the mortality of a hip fracture uh, and the recovery is is uh, associated with very high mortality so um, a dramatic reduction with simply taking vitamin D. Why aren't we using this more? And again, I have an issue with what, are, what is toxic. They say that maybe 10,000 is too much. Um, if you were to sit out in the sun for 20 minutes, uh, exposing about 40% of your body, you would process about 10,000 units. Um, I feel 20,000 is too much higher incidence of stones in that, in, in that particular group. At 50,000 is way too much. Um, I, those individuals are having very high calcium levels. But 5,000 to 10,000 works to be a very good level, whereas this 200 to 400 is nuts. I mean, that's so low that it doesn't has no benefit. 800 is still just touching it. We want to get patients' levels up into the 50, 60 to 80 range, 60 to 80 range on the uh, hydroxy vitamin D. The reason is, is that's where we're seeing improvement in cancers. Uh, we're not seeing that on the lower range in the 20 and 30, and even the range that says 32 nanograms per milliliter. That's good for osteoporosis, certainly good for rickets, though we're not dealing with that. But the key is, it doesn't help you in cancer. It doesn't upgrade your immune system, so you need to take more, at least 5,000 a day. Man, it looks like honey mustard. Ooh, okay. <coughs> Girl. I'm not leaving. Dude, stop. Whoa, 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 whoa